Cool. Sweet. Cool. Well, do you want to do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So, hi, my name's Jess, or I guess Jessica Harrison. I'm a painter based out of Phoenix, Arizona, and I went to school and attended Watts Atelier in Southern California from the time I was 16 until I was 24. Now I'm 25 and I live out here and I'm just doing the art thing, so yeah. Nice, cool. And, and your goals are to become like a fine art oil painter, right? Yeah, definitely. And uh, my main focus and like passion, you could say, is going to be the port like portraiture and just people and different cultures and things like that and telling their stories and whatnot. So that's the right. deal, yo. Yeah. Well, so I, I guess, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what this painting is, like what you're painting right now and a little bit about your process? Yeah. So I'm actually painting you, Christian. This is the man, the myth, the legend. And I'm painting it kind of a la prima style, which is wet into wet. So basically it's gonna be like a one session and we're done type deal, you know? And that's, nice thing about that is that it's, get the paint so wet so you can really work those edges and you can get some effects on there that you just wouldn't be able to get if the paint had been dried. So this was a met, I learned how to paint and everything from a Watts and we painted from life there all the time. So between that, uh, practicing on my own, watching other artists that I admire and enjoy uh, paint as well, I've just kind of put this all together, I guess, is how I do it. So I'm toning the canvas right now and I'm just doing a general, my brush is too small, like this is something you should use a big brush for. But I'm just getting it down there to kill the white of the canvas and also so in that way, that helps kind of you judge values and temperatures better. Mind you, this is a pretty yellow, like kind of background color we got going, so keeping that in mind. But my decision behind that when I had started the painting was I did want it to be warmer, so that was why I chose, like, I decided to push that warmth there to begin with. Right. Well, and I, I hear a lot of artists talk about how starting with something is a lot better than starting with nothing, even if it's just a, a different color than white. Oh, totally. Just because, too, I feel like um, it helps, like, I don't know, you see the, the values better, but there's something to be said there where it's like, oh, okay, it's not like a fresh canvas anymore that I have to be worried about, like, keeping, it needs to be perfect, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Right here, I'm just kind of, while the paint, again, is wet, I'm just marking in, like, drawing spots and kind of getting like a placement and sense for things. I'll always take the time in the beginning of the drawing to make sure that I get it accurate. And not only do I do that in the beginning, but I'm going to be doing it throughout the process as well. Things have a habit of moving and drifting. And I know that sounds weird because you're like, well, I drew the eye on the surface. Why is it moved over? It, things just do. So you gotta yeah. keep that in mind. Well, I remember when I was watching you do this, at this stage, we were talking a little bit about it in the video where this is probably the most important part of the entire painting. You know, it's it's not mm -hmm. the sexy part of get, putting in the color or the highlights or anything, but it's probably the part that's gonna determine the quality of the painting, you know? And I remember you spent maybe an hour just like doing a light draw-in essentially of where you think things would have gone uh, for, for the painting. Yeah. I, um, I, I feel like it is super important too to further expand on that just because if you get this foundation right then it saves you all that time later on from having to correct things and it's like that would be horrible if you painted a really cool nose and then oh look at that it's in the wrong spot so right. now you have to go and redo everything. Yeah absolutely and I don't know I was I've been I've been seeing that across the board it's like Every artist I've talked to agrees that this first oh. 20, 30 minutes or an hour is, is probably the most important part of the painting. And it takes a lot of like getting rid of your ego or getting rid of, you know, um, you know, trying to make things look super cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess I, do you want to talk a little bit about what your decisions are right now? Yeah. Here, are you are you picking up on my um, AC a lot right now? No. No, no, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's like blowing, so. All right, right now, I have the drawing established, you know, for the most part, 
and I'm feeling pretty confident with that so now I'm gonna start establishing my dark patterns and I'm gonna I pre-mix some paint too on the palette as well that way I can just kind of like I have like a big mother mix that I can go from so this is the general color of the shadow but you know I need to make it more yellow or I need to make it more blue or like push it this way or that I can I already have a bunch of paint mixed up so I can add in that little um, that little variety or like adjustment to it so I'm going through the shadow pattern right now and I'm just kind of blocking all that stuff in squinting at my reference a lot that's a big thing make sure you squint 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 because we have a habit of getting so caught up in little details that we lose out on the big picture and that's often how things get kind of wonky and out of sorts and you'll even see me in the video here like I remember when I was painting I was like oh shoot you're getting caught up in these little details chill out like keep going keep moving right yeah yeah definitely um well and uh, I, I remember I mean we talked about this before but I think the idea of painting is actually super simple and I remember I, I've talked I was talking to another painter about this where um when you make a mistake in proportion or value or something, it's generally because you weren't paying attention. Because when you think about the idea of painting, it's actually all just about direct relationships and where our nose is or where an eye is or any of that kind of stuff can be measured pretty easily. Um, you know, it, and if you were unable to make that decision on where you think something should go, you're probably thinking about you know your job or you know like, like stuff that's like not directly or directly related related to the painting there and as i'm stepping back to see like, oh check measurements you know this is feeling off and i'll catch the mistakes that i was making and i'll just sit there and be like oh my god why did i even think that, that was even remotely over there and a lot of it too is just because i was mindlessly doing it so mm -hmm. it's it's kind of this weird balance, you know, where it's like you kind of, it's like you zen out when you're doing it, you know, because you're in the zone, and you're thinking in a sense like that, and it, yeah. it transports you, but at the same time, it's like, well, you, you can't go too far <laughs> down that rabbit hole because you still need to be present enough to make accurate decisions, especially Absolutely. in the beginning stages yeah. like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I found that drawing is, is this super meditative thing. Um, a lot of it has to do with just, uh, um, you know, being in the moment and making the correct decisions and not necessarily like, you, you know, it's both being like very judgmental and very intentional with the decisions you're making, but also like not being, uh, you know, too much, like too uptight with yourself, like being okay with just the fact that you're painting and, um, you know, it's, uh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you know, there's that Bob Ross quote. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter how good of a painting you're doing as long as you're painting that day. That, that means you're doing a good painting. I agree. I mean, I found, like, too, that when I relax into it that way and I'm not worried, like, oh, my God, this needs to be perfect, or putting that unnecessary pressure on myself, I end up doing better paintings because, like you said, you're, it's like you're focused on it in the moment, you're not stressing. And it's overall just a way more enjoyable experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do you want to talk about the kind of things that you do that allow you to be more intentional when you're painting? Yeah, so one thing that I've done a lot of is kind of traditional academic study. So I've drawn a lot from life, studied like construction and anatomy and things like that. So in that way, when I'm sitting here and I'm painting and I'm trying to do it at a faster speed too, you know, with the alla prima, that way I have that knowledge base to work from and that'll help with my decisions that I make here. So a certain brush stroke that you might see me do at an angle or some of these strokes that you see such as up in the mouth where they're more planar. That, you know, I'm using my knowledge that I've gained from the Azaro head, which is awesome. I'd really recommend that to pick up. And then also say even doing um like Van de Poel and studying how he designed lips and everything. Mind you, Christian, like you're not a female, obviously. So I wouldn't, in the case of Vanderpool, want to design your lips entirely like that, you know, because I would give you very feminine lips. But just kind of overall thinking of just like the design. 
So right. those are, I'm thinking about traditionally technical stuff, also other artists that I like. And I often have in the back of my mind as I'm painting, you could say like the vibe or the intention that I want to do with it. Or if there's an artist that I saw recently that I really like, like, oh, I might have that going in the back of my mind to help guide some of my decisions. So maybe I like how this person did color, so I'm going to try to push my color sense or like my harmonies more that way, you know? Right, right. But yeah, you can yeah, see here, yeah. I'm going pretty plainer with my brush strokes often. And I try to do that to keep it sculptural. And also it gives me a sense of like the form as a three-dimensional thing too. So that's definitely helpful. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, again, I think it's all about just keeping that simple you know, that simple read, you know, keeping it as like, um, making it as hard as possible to make a mistake, you know, keeping it as binary. It's like, you know, you are very blatantly making that cheek, uh, you know, very, very planar on, on my face. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's hard to like, it's hard for that to be anything, anything else other than, than the, the plane. plane. And yeah, I, I am skipping, skipping ahead in various parts of the edit, just, you know, it's uh, Oh no, that's fine. Yeah. It's cool yeah. here because you can kind of see now um, I'm starting to add like things are making a little bit more sense because I got the dark of your hair in there established. Yeah. That's one thing I really recommend for people to start with often is the hair or something easy. I remember Ben and Meadow at Watch would often say that like start with something easy like in the forehead or the hair. Uh, and that being the case because the hair is a good spot Oftentimes you'll have your darkest darks in there with most people being, you know, like brunette or dark brown hair or something like that. And right. that'll help establish the value range also with, on that portrait. And I like doing that. And then I also have got the lightest part of your face established too real fast, you know, on that right side. So now it's kind of just a matter of like, okay, how's this working? And it's like you said, that big, simple, like keeping it simple. Well, if it doesn't work at this stage when it's this simple, then it's not gonna work with a bunch more stuff added on top of it. You know, right. you need that strong foundation. So that's part yeah, of the reason yeah. why my starts take so long, I feel like, is because I get caught up with that, which is like both good and bad. Yeah, well, I, I, have you ever heard of a Jeremy, how Jeremy Lip King paints? No, so I really he, wanna he... watch him. It'd be amazing. It's really, I've never seen him paint in person or I've never seen his DVDs or anything, but what I've heard is that he'll spend, like he paints extremely slowly, but every decision he makes is as accurate as it, as it could possibly be, you know? He'll like spend 15 or like two hours putting in a head, you know, like putting in a land or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, just to make sure it's as, like every decision he's making is as the decision he actually wants to be making, you know, trying to be as like intentional to almost a point to where it's like, it, it, it is, it is not fun to watch, you know, it's like, it's, it's actually pretty tedious. Um, but it's getting away from that, like ego of trying to perform and trying to impress people with the quality of your painting and trying to make a good painting instead. You know? Yeah. It's like, well, and the thing is, too, is that in the long run, he probably ends up, he would save a lot of time because he's not doing a bunch of wasted effort, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he, I think it's, he's a fast painter, but it's not because he's actually a fast painter, it's because he's making really correct decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's a big, that was something, too, that people want to rush through these early stages because they want to get to the sexy part of the fun, juicy brush strokes and color, which is amazing and fun, understandable completely. That being said though, it's like, man, dude, you're gonna have so much more fun with that part of the painting and that part of the process if you just take the time right now to get this done. And yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I love this stage too though. I have so much fun. I mean, I don't think, I, there's stages in the process, right, Christian, where you're working on the painting and you start off really excited and then you're like struggling through it and you're sitting there thinking to yourself like, oh my God, this is garbage. Who am I? Yeah. And you know how you can have that like emotional roller coaster? Yeah, absolutely. And I, again, it kind of goes back to the ego thing where it's like, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you're painting, you're having a successful painting, you know? It's like you could be, you know, um, like taking out 
like you, you could be a garbage man. No, no, nothing against garbage men, but you could be like, you know, mowing a lawn, or you could be, you know, doing a number of things you would rather not be doing, or you, or you could be starving, or so I don't know. It's like, and the fact that your painting is like a, it's it's uh, almost like an expression of your your freedom and your ability to just like sit there and observe something and, um, you know, be be thankful for for that, you know, and. Um, anything else beyond that might be like you're defeating the purpose of painting in the first place yeah I really like that like I you know I really like that a lot because when you think about it you don't unless you you need to take care of other things first before you can sit down to paint like bills stuff like that life things and yeah. you know you are really fortunate if you have the time like I've been able to have to sit down and paint you know, work on something like this for two hours, let alone, you know, spend years going to school for it, you know, and tons of time just being in those environments. I'm really, really fortunate that I've gotten that opportunity because right. like, most of the people in the world, even just here locally in the U.S., like, won't get that, so. Well, to, to me, it seems like you've intentionally sought it out. You know, I was talking to Lucas about this the other day where it's like you've made intentional sacrifices in your life to pursue art, you know, it's like, you're not necessarily like going and trying to be a like a lawyer or a doctor or anything, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's more of just like you're not necessarily pursuing money or, um, you know, like se security in a sense. You're pursuing like like traditional security. You're pursuing something that you actually, you know, could spend the rest of your life doing and never retire and totally be totally be okay with that. Yeah, that's um, I. I'd rather live my life like that and I'm not looking for the accolades and to be famous and for people would be like, oh my God, you're an amazing painter. And I'm saying, that being said though, like if someone's gonna tell me that, I'm, heck yeah, thank you, dude. I appreciate it. You know, like, of course, like that's so wonderful to hear and flattering and thank you so much. Um, but that's not why I do it, right? And I, that's not why I think most painters do it. It's cause we, I wanna be able to paint and if I'm able to do that, as a lifetime thing, then I am a happy camper. Absolutely. Well, and it's part of the reason why I think you're going to be successful at this stuff, like really successful. Um, it's it's because it's it's not about the accolades. It's it's about the um, you know the fact that you get to do it. You know, um, and it it does seem to me like you really do enjoy it. Like um, like if you, well, it, it, it just for context, like I, I, again for anyone watching. Uh, Jess is currently working as a, as a waitress right now at a restaurant and spending her free time, you know, painting and uh, studying and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, like, like there is a sacrifice there, I think. Oh, definitely. I mean, like, mind you, working in the restaurant industry, if you're trying to be an artist, is a great option. Uh, I'd really recommend it's a you have to be careful though, just because you need a, it's very easy to get sucked in and distracted and taken away from your goal. So, you know, just, it's one of those jobs that it's really, really great. Just make sure you have a goal in mind with why you're doing it and stuff. And if you're doing it because you like doing it and this is something, you know, that you genuinely enjoy. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but, uh, I'm doing it. I, I like the waitressing to a degree, right? It's fun. Not, I mean, obviously if I could paint, I would do that professionally and do that and make my money off of that. Waitressing is fun though. I like it. You're chatting with some people. You get to interact with different people every day. It's like kind of different even when it's a slow shift, you know? Right. Um, and it does teach you, you get some interesting skills with people as far as being able to read them and those little things that you could get that you wouldn't get with other jobs. And I think yeah. that actually, when I try to look at it from an art perspective, I think that's gonna be really beneficial for me in the future, as far as like, just being able to navigate interactions with people on a on the fly basis. Let's just say if I'm somewhere and I wanna paint, wanna sit down and paint people locally and be like, hey, well, being able to get a vibe off of someone quickly is always helpful. Like, oh, are they going to let me do it? Are they going to get weird? You know, et cetera. And right. waitressing has helped me kind of figure that one out. Develop that, I guess. Yeah. Christian, you can, like, get rid of all that if you want. I was, like, trying not to, like, say something that was incriminating towards serving. 
No, no. Well, it, it's it's I, I'm you know part of the reason I want to talk to you is that like you are doing this like you know like like in La La Land when Emma Stone's character was working as a barista in you know trying to be an actor. You know, it's like you you're doing a version of that. You know, where it's like you you are on the path, but you're also at, on a point in, in your journey where th- this job is like it's important just to like pay the bills and you know kind of be on your on your own and stuff and kind of finding your own way and um i think it's like a pretty common thing that most people have to do is they have to work a job they don't want to do while pursuing their love for whatever they're doing on the side you know um and i I think your your perspective on it is, is actually like really interesting you know oh being able to like how to navigate people and all that well like how to navigate like how do you maintain being focused on your goals for painting uh while also working as a as a as a waitress you know it's like how do you stay on how do you stay focused one Um, thing that i'll do often if when it's slow i'll like go in the corner somewhere where people can't see me and i just draw on the receipt paper and i'll like practice my anatomy and stuff like that and be like let's see can i draw this from imagination or i'll draw customers if they don't see me and catch me yeah (laughs) right well, and it, again, it's like um, constantly being like aware of painting something like painting is something you want to do and not necessarily like it's it's worth it for you to like go out and do painting and, uh, you know, focus time on that completely by yourself rather than to, you know, again, be going out and partying or going out and like um, doing things that, you know, are you, you might be socially pressured to do or things that are more traditional that you actually don't want to do and um you know staying honest to you know again staying honest to that vision for yourself you know it's like accepting that you're a painter in oils and not necessarily like compromising that to go try and make more money being um you know um like a banker or something you know or like like knowing knowing that there's an easier path but doing it anyway you know Oh, definitely. Well, I wouldn't, um, you know, my, I think if I were to take an easier route or a more traditional route that would ensure monetary success more, I don't think the successes would feel as sweet, you know, when they happen versus like if I were to keep pursuing what I am now and be successful at it later, uh, that would be much more satisfying, I think, you know, versus say having a job where it just doesn't ultimately feel like me and being like I was genuine because I was pretty close to, you know, leaving, not doing the art thing and like, oh, fine, I'll do the traditional route. And man, Christian, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. There was this part of me that's like, Jess, if you don't really pursue this and keep going at it, you quit. You're quitting. And that bugs, that bugs the crap out of me. I can't do that. So. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it's strange how it's like, you know, that there's an easier path in front of us. And when we try and go do it, we don't always, you know, it, it's, it's actually the wrong thing to do. You know, it's actually harder in a sense because um, it's like it could be easier work to work at a bank. And again, not bashing people who work at banks. I'm just saying that as like a, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a job. You know, it can be a job sometimes. Um, but they can feel just as passionate about their job as we do about ours and art, you know? It's just well, guess, working in that job I, I that guess, makes you feel that. I, I guess I, I suspect that there are more bankers who don't like their jobs and there are painters who don't like their jobs. <laughs> De- yeah, um, I can definitely see that. And I, I, I like banking and working in insurance or being like a, uh, I don't know, like a cat like filing papers for a real estate company like all of those things they probably make more money than an artist would ever make but they're also really fucking boring you know (laughs) they're like really tedious and um you know it's it's strange how that's easier work and more secure but in spite of that it's actually harder because you can't get yourself to actually do it you know well i think um you know, the, the higher you up the risk and, like, the misery factor, the higher you also up the, like, the reward. Media, right? Yeah, so it's kind of like, how much are you willing to gamble? You know, and how are you willing to gamble? Like, what is it worth gambling on? 
all right yeah now. yeah oh sorry okay. i was just gonna okay. say like so right now i've got the what i've been doing is so as i'm watching myself paint here one thing i did was that i wanted to get my background established to help with temperature relationships and i often will use all the like i mentioned earlier i'll get my ma main masses established on the portrait but when i start going into color and i want to have it a more accurate represent not representation um i want to get like the full context of things established then i'll go into the background and i'll key in a color or something there that i'm going to do so i can judge that relationship against the values and colors i'm like messing up my words here in the face so i remember when i was painting this i was looking at your face and i'm just sitting there thinking like oh this was it's really cool like the colors are really really cool like they don't feel lifelike enough to me yet. And that's partially because, you know, one, I have that under, that background color, that uh, base coat of that really warm, like gold. But two, I don't really have anything that's a true cool in there, right? Or at least in this context, a true cool. So that's where I went in with the background and I got the blue of the shirt and the green established. You know, those are much more cool in comparison to the flesh tones. And when I did that, that kind of helped set things up more. So I got that done. Yeah. I blew out some edges because, you know, with this being the background, I don't want your eye going too much into there. I want the eye and my viewer to be focused on your face, Christian, and kind of more like maybe like the brush work, you could say. Uh, so I kept that loose and just kind of a little bit unclear. And then I've gone back in now with, um, I took my lighter values because I was like, all right, let's get those established. We have, we're feeling pretty good on the darks and I blocked those in, and then I got my mid-tone values kind of established a little bit too to kind of connect my shadows and my lights. And I went in and I softened and adjusted some edges along that border, if that makes sense. Okay. And I'm doing that, yeah. uh, I'm kind of bringing it all up as I go, just because, you know, you don't wanna, at least for me, I don't wanna do the lips to complete finish, for example, and then leave the eye there because, you know, Again, what if something was off and I needed to fix it? And it's hard to sometimes get those relationships established accurately if you're not bringing it up together. One thing that I'll do though that kind of goes against that is if I do know I want something to be the focus, I will, uh, can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the thing that I want to be the focus, let's just say if it's a multi-figure painting, well, in that sense, it would, make, it would be a good idea maybe to paint to a finish, like your main object, like the focal point entirely. But that's just that situation. It's one thing with art, Christian, <laughs> it's like all these rules, there's always the exception to the rule like that you can break it with. So it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why you learn the fundamentals and the rules. So in that way, you know how you can break them and do it well, you know? Like you can't right. bend reality if you don't know how it works to a degree. Yeah, well, and I, I remember, you know, talking to Ben or Eric about how they break the rules when it comes to the fundamentals and their decisions are actually extremely simple. It's like, yeah, you just, you know, break down a leg into a box and then use the, you know, that concept for every single tertiary muscle form, you know? And watching them do it, it's extremely simple, but then trying to do it yourself, it's it's obviously really, really hard, you know? Well, um, and, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. Well, I was gonna say that um, the act of painting, I think has a lot to do with like, realizing it's, it's actually extremely simple and then practicing and getting really good at applying those fundamental things like gesture and perspective and basic color relationships to insanely complex paintings. Yeah. Well, even just doing something simple like, you know, your portrait here, Christian, I mean, that's an incredibly complex form, the human face. I mean, even if we were to just go as far as to start breaking down the features individually, I mean, just like looking at the human eye and all of that, there's so, so much complexity there that when you do think about it, condensing it down into something super simple, like these simple concepts is difficult because you're having to, that's so many layers of information and like, things that you have in mind and notions that you have to strip away from to get down to that base, you know? And that's yeah. where someone like Brian uh, Knox, Brian Knox, he's amazing. He's really good at being able to take something really simple and 
he like he can condense it down to like just the bare minimum of what you need to get that to work well like his construction's great i look at him for stuff like that um you'll hear me oftentimes i I'll, I'll bring up a lot of other artists too just because i i mean the world's filled up it's full of great artists right now and in the past right so like just steal just steal it all steal it all jacket five finger discount just kidding no do that um <laughs> but like you know if you like something think about why you like it and then maybe try to mimic that on your own i remember eric one time gave it's probably some of the best advice i've ever heard for art and it was he was sitting there saying like you know it's easy to sit there and say you don't like a painting i don't like this i don't like that uh but ask yourself though if this was your pain like why don't you like it what would you do differently and ever since have like ever since i heard that i've looked at so many paintings and other things or mu listen to music whatever it is and been like oh i don't like that i would do this differently and thinking actively like going from just thinking oh i don't like that to really thinking about why i don't like it or what i would do to make it different that's helped my help me form my opinions more become more opinionated and also too it's just i think it's important you learn a lot that way too you can look at a bougaro painting and not like it or not like something about it you're allowed to have your opinion you know it's just like are you going to do anything productive with it yeah, you know, and I, I remember something, somebody saying something to me that really resonated, where it's like, you could learn something from everybody, including the people you don't want to learn things from, you know? It's like, a homeless guy knows a lot more about sleeping on the street than I ever would, you know? He's probably really good at, you know, surviving in a, in a really harsh environment, or, you know? But you, you don't have to learn anything from observing that person, you can learn about you know, maybe, or, or if you're looking at a Bogoro painting and you really don't want to do a Bogoro painting, maybe you're like, you learn that about yourself, where that's way too technical. You know, I really admire the finish, but to get there, it's I would never ever consider doing anything like that. Um, and in a sense, you're learning something about yourself. Oh, totally, dude. Because you have to. It's important to know just as much as what you do like, as much as what you don't, right? Yeah. Because like, you can't have a like without a dislike. I mean, it's like two sides of the same coin. But yeah, absolutely. It's kind of, I have the painting with me here finished and I'm looking at it as I work on, as I'm watching myself work on it, it's kind of a trip. So right now too, I'm starting to gesture in some of like, not gesture in, uh, like ghost in some of the facial hair you have. I did make your uh, chin <laughs> way too dark. Like you definitely don't have facial hair like that. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But one thing to keep in mind, so with beards or any sort of facial hair, I will cool it down a little bit. I also don't make it, say like where on his upper lip, Christian, where you have where uh, some of that stubble going, I'll often for that, I'll take some of the hair mixture that I want and I mix it in with my skin tone because really if you think about it, it's kind of like you're looking at the skin still through, it's like you have a filter of the hair, right? And that's kind of, cooling down the skin so thinking about it like that i have my skin tone color that i'm gonna that i would paint for there but then i'm gonna tint it a bit more with that hair color right so that way we kind of have that relationship working so i do that that's how i establish that color and then i paint it thin because especially with things like facial hair a lot of what gets hair and things like that to read is that layering right and layering often you know you have to wait for it to dry well it's all a prima it's wet into wet we don't have that luxury we don't have time like that so one thing that's important to do and this is all this will be something you establish yourself as an artist the more you do this stuff is you know let's get that part of the facial hair established right now so it can have some time to set up and settle in a bit into the canvas and then that way later on when I go back to do a little bit more detail or work the facial hair a little bit more, it's not gonna all pick up or like smush into itself. And I also can still get that layered effect without having to actually wait all that time. So yeah. that just reminds me like having a bit of a game plan is always helpful. If you don't have one though, because you're new or like this is kind of like some uncharted waters, that's okay. I'd say just don't let that deter you from starting. Just start, get after it. You're never going to have a game plan if you never play the game, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
Well, and I, I think it's, it has a lot to do with, again, like, you know, kind of being meditative and getting rid of your ego where you are planning ahead and you're not trying to do everything all at once to, you know, to be lazy or just to like show off, you know, you're doing it like, okay, you know, I, I have to do these steps beforehand to make this facial hair work, you know, to make these other steps in the future more uh, accurate to what I actually want the painting to be. Mm -hmm. And that's like recently for myself, I've eased up on this bit where I, it would be daunting because you're like, I have all this, that, and the other, because I want to, I have to fix this. I have to do that. I'm excited about this, but, and it can cause you to choke up or maybe like not even do it. Just pick something. I mean, my mom always would tell me, choose a wolf close, like what's the wolf closest to the sled? And that I always ask myself to just get a decision going. So whether or not, like if I'm just starting on a painting or not, or uh, all like halfway through it, almost done with it. Like I still ask myself, like what's the problem right now at hand that I need to settle with, right. like get done now. And then I yeah. do that, move on, do that. Like, and you just repeat that process. Yeah, definitely. So here too, um, like, I'm keeping stuff more simple in the lights because, I mean, one, we're seeing more of his face and shadow anyways. So that being the case, like, I'd rather have my interest be more there. And I'm just kind of continuing to layer up the brushwork and work on my edges. Something too with painting often is that you do have to build up to your lights and your darks a little bit more. That's why often you'll see painters where it's like, when they first start, they get all those dark, you know, their shadow mapping done and established. And then they go to their midtones, and then they go to their highlights. Like building up to that helps keep better value control for yourself. Also keeps like your values cleaner too, and the colors that you end up using for those values, I found. Someone like Elgrin is really great to look at for that. Definitely. But building up to those lights is really helpful. And then also too, that gives you like thicker lights which traditionally you know you load up your lights and you keep your darks thinner so it kind of helped it's a double whammy so i get that and then i also get the texture effect too that i like right yeah well uh, do you want to talk about maybe some of the things that you wish you were thinking of while you were doing this painting yeah so i think i was like starting to get caught up there with little things and I don't know, just getting distracted. But as I'm looking at it, I really wish, like it just bugs the shit out of me that your facial hair off the bottom actually is too dark. Cause I feel like it's a decent likeness until like I throw in your like chin with that dark hair. I'm like, damn it. Cause it's, it's funny, I like the, I remember in the process of the painting, I was like, oh my God, this sucks and uh. But now as I look at it, <laughs> now I'm actually happier with it. I was like, oh, like actually it's, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's a good painting. I forgot to take it when you offered it to me. Oh, oh, I have your camera bag, by the way, too, like with that random stuff in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, so those both are here for you whenever you're ready. Sick. So, I don't know, like, what's something... I can't recall off the top of my head things that I wish I was thinking about more. Maybe just to, to like... I'd say most likely just, like, being more aware of the drawing. And just, yeah. I think a, another thing that I always need to be conscious of is not being lazy in the sense of like, remember how you said Jeremy Lipking is a really slow painter because he takes forever to make the, to do these decisions, right? But he he does them accurately, so he's not wasting yeah. time later. I think for me, right. that's one thing I really would want to really work on is taking my time more to make accurate decisions that are better thought out. Because as I watch right. the painting right now, some a lot of it, I just feel like I'm kind of poking around because I'm kind of, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time for me. It's like, I got to get my sea legs with something, you know, but same token too. It's like, well, make a decision, just go stick with it or like be more conscious, like get your head in the game. Right. Your ass yeah. is in a hat. Stop wearing it like one, like get your head out of it. But, um, I'd say that's probably like one the bigger thing that was just keeping myself focused because sometimes it's like you start off really well and because you're excited about the piece and you're fully you know you're you're in it you're in it you're doing it 
And then as time goes on, then you start, you get comfy and you get a little distracted and you let yourself wander. And I feel like that was something that I was probably letting myself do a little bit here. So just, yeah, continuing to stay focused. Right. Yeah, well, and again, it goes back to the, like, being, you know, intentional while you're drawing, like keeping your goals in mind for the painting as a whole. And, um, you know, trying to like, be aware of what you know each intention like each each stroke is actually doing you know and being very intentional about it I have a I have a lot of internal discussion I guess you could say like conversations as I'm painting I ask my right. and it's important to ask yourself these questions you can even ask yourself out loud it sometimes it, it's helpful to like verbally say it out loud but just be like okay like is that color is that too purple all right, is that too much blue in there? No, we need more red. Okay, cool, we'll do that, add that. That line, oh, that's too curved. I need to straighten it out more. Like having, trying your best to have unbiased and like, you know, looking at things objectively and then doing that. I mean, again, it's something Eric, I remember, told me. He's like, well, what feels wrong with it? That feels wrong. He's like, well, why didn't you fix it? Why didn't you do that then? It's like, if that feels off, adjust it, you know, see how that works. Yeah. Keeping that in mind though, one thing to keep in mind for people as they are adjusting or if something's just feeling off and you're like, oh, I just don't know what it is. Uh, you can take a photo on your phone. Sometimes looking at it through a different lens or like in a mirror is helpful. But sometimes those things that you think are off really aren't. It's, a, it's the relationship is off. So you have to look somewhere else in the painting where there's something, it's a different thing that's off. It's just the way how that's interacting, say, with the ear is making the ear look like it's off. Does that make sense? Right. It's like kind of yeah. like the context of it. So keep that right. in mind too. Like, you know, just it's important to look at the painting and the process, step back from it as a whole. Like, does this work and how's it working overall? Well, and I found with observational painting, especially that our teachers aren't there to correct your painting for you. They're to they're there to remind you why you're painting, to remind you to fix it yourself, you know? It's like to, they remind you that to compare things to other parts of the painting. And it's, you know, never helpful, maybe it is a little bit, but it's never that helpful for a teacher to just come up and fix your, your painting, painting for you and solve all your problems, you know, and, and make your painting look good without any, any of your actual work. Yeah, definitely. I always, Whenever I was in school and stuff, I always liked waiting towards the later part of the end, or at least until like I was really in deep water and I was just, oh my god. But um, <laughs> just because I liked, I wanted to work it out as much as I could before then, or maybe I'd get some verbal feedback beforehand. And I'd also too though, here's the thing is that I would wait until the end often to get feedback because I'd spend the class listening often to other people get feedback. So yeah. I'd, you know, if I didn't have my headphones in, I'd, I'd listen to music a good amount of the time, but I also liked hearing what my teachers were saying to other students. Um, I learned, a, I mean, a lot of what I learned at school was through that, just because you hear the same thing over and over and over again, right? We all are making the same mistakes, but in hearing my instructors constantly reiterating, like these straightforward basic concepts, like over and over. I mean, Christian, I listened to that for what, like six years? plus yeah right. well it's like that's thank god because now i constantly have that going on in the back in like the background for me to the point now where i don't think about it as much anymore because it's just like oh you know so i learned a lot that that's way good. if you're ever at workshops or anything like that listen to what the instructor is saying to other students because chances are you're probably making a similar if not the same mistake as that person you know you're because yeah. you're probably same yeah. skill level too you know Right. Well, um, I guess, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about like your plans for the future and the kind of things that you want to do, like big projects or paintings or any anything else? My uh, plans for the future, right, we mentioned earlier was, I will, fine art is what I want to do. I want to paint portraits and paint people. Like that's, that's my shtick, that's my deal. I find, even though people like upset me or I get irritated with them, I find them incredibly interesting. Maybe that's why they irritate me. Um, but ultimately, so I come from a military background as a Navy. I grew up in the Navy with my dad and my mom was also a Navy nurse as well. Dad was a pilot. 
So I've always grown up in a very kind of like military environment, not like crazy anything, but that's always been a big part of my life. And I initially tried joining the Navy myself. I wasn't able to because of like past medical things, but one thing that I wanted, one, I've been, I'm like, how do I put this? Christian, you can like literally just cut all that out if you want. I don't care. But what I want to do ultimately with my work is use portraiture to make the world a better more beautiful place and if that's the world of just one person because i painted their portrait and it made them you know feel good about themselves in that sense then hell yeah that is a win for me dude um what i want to do with that and coupling that with the military is i ultimately like to do all the prima portraits of active duty and retired service members and then use like you know give them the portrait and then do a finalized portrait of them from which i will you know like i'd like to raise awareness and money for vets and their families there's a lot of issues going on right now with um veterans not being able to get the health care that they need and like that's an entire like i could go on and on about that christian like it's obvious it's something i'm really passionate about and i want to use art and the skill set that i have to work with that and then ultimately work um, I would love to go overseas and kind of, you see like Susan Lyon and Scott Burdick do this a lot where they travel to countries and they do a lot of portraiture and that's kind of what I would like to do, something in that realm and then get involved into like maybe some sort of like charity work with that. But portraiture is what, that's my shtick. That's what I want to do for my art career, I guess, you know, focusing on people. Well, have, you, have you ever thought about teaching or anything? Yeah, I so have. I would love, I love teaching. I've done it before with, um, you know, with my high school and stuff like that. I did a lot of teaching in, in my community uh, back in San Diego. I would well, love to. You're also a, uh, one of the uh, critiquers for the Watts Atelier online school, right? Mm-hmm, for a long time. I no longer do that anymore, but I, I love doing that. Learned a lot that way, too, actually. That's, a, that's another thing to point out is teaching and even if you feel like oh i don't you know there's no way i'm not qualified because lord knows i feel like that all the time um yeah but still sharing your knowledge with someone and like helping them out helps you out too so i'd recommend for people to to do that yeah yeah absolutely i totally agree i think teaching you know allows you to see the mistakes of other people and you get to figure out how to solve them you know it's like they make mistakes that you would never make based on your personality and getting the chance to see it from their perspective allows you to see your painting in a completely different way. Um, well, and I, I guess uh, for anyone listening, uh, like, would you be cool if people reached out to you and asked for mentorships or any of that kind of stuff? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I, sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend if anyone listening to this or watching this is curious about learning the process of painting. Uh, Jess is a great artist and, you know, very fun person to be around. And I think, um, you know, she would be helpful to anyone that's curious about the process of getting better at oil painting and, and what it means to actually, uh, you know, practice on your own and get better on your own. Oh, thank you, Christian. I, and I would love to help anybody out with that. So. My door is always open, or I guess my DMs are always open, so slide in. Yeah, dude. <laughs> um, well, we have about uh, three minutes left on this recording. Uh, are there any other closing thoughts or anything yeah. you want to talk about? So I'm just hitting it with like the last kind of little things. I have a soft brush there that's a uh, beat to crap, Robert Simmons, Sable, RIP. They don't make those anymore. <laughs> they never do with good stuff but um i'm just softening some edges i went in and i hit up a couple of highlights and color notes on uh christian's face i don't know how well you can see them in the uh video as far as like the color notes that's something that can be hard to pick up on via camera but on the shadow side you can kind of see it i hit some blue notes in there like a couple of uh blue strokes up in the eyebrow and by the eye i don't know i just i felt like doing that also the eye for me like was the focal point even though this is a very loose and impression type painting the eye is the focal point so I, that's why i did most of those little blue notes around there 
and I hit up a couple more lighter highlights too on the lid side of the face but that's kind of like I was just going around last minute adjusting little things here and there and just getting a kind of final sense of like all right at this stage too mind you there are some things that I know and I have this with every painting as well I'm sure every artist does there's some things that you're like oh I don't like that or I'm not happy with that and it's just one of those things that you have to be like, okay, just move on. Let's, there'll be another painting, we'll, we'll have that. Um, and not in the sense of like, and that's not to go against what I was saying earlier and having your drawing be accurate. Like that stuff is, I feel like you need to keep on top of that. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is don't let yourself get bogged down with shoulda, woulda, shoulda's, woulda's, and could've's. Like keep going and then just keep that in the back of your mind for the next time you paint. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it's it's uh it's always about the next painting, not about the painting that you're doing. Yeah, it's right. I mean it's the journey, man. It's the process of it. It's not the final, right? Like you just said. Yeah. So well, oh, uh, I'm knocking down people... the paint real quick too, for the glare. Sorry, go ahead. I'm using that soft brush right there to like knock down the glare, too, because yeah. you'll find that when you paint, the way the light will hit the paint strokes in a certain way and you'll get this really annoying glare. So using a really big soft brush and very light pressure, knocking it down that way kind of helps with that. Nice. Well, That's good, good painting. painting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how should people model. follow you? Huh? How should people follow you online? Ooh. Well, my address is, no, just kidding. <laughs> I live on the second floor, so if you can see into my apartment, you're really tall. Anyways, my uh, Instagram is going to be jtown755. That is J-T-O-W-N-755. So I should probably change that to make it more professional, but you know, I like my high school drinking what, name. What, so. What's the significance of 755? <laughs> I don't know. I, Katie, my sister, and I, we always, since we were kids, had 755 attached to everything. I don't know where that came from. But the yeah. J-Town part was my uh, high school drinking name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. That's well, why I'm like, maybe if, you should change that. It, if, if you uh, ever forget, just think that J-Town is Jessica's high school drinking name. And yeah. we'll be able to remember. Okay, the, the video has ended. <laughs> Perfect. Um, do you have any other closing thoughts? Uh, no, no. It's been awesome being able to do this with you, Christian. And thank you so much. Like, I'm really Absolutely. excited. Absolutely. Thanks for doing this. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, we'll right. chat again soon. All right, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh...